everyone, welcome back to TAC's YouTube channel. Today we're filming our third video and um, last week we filmed our second video and the title of the video was called The Gift to Change and basically our message was, um, the message that we sent out to people uh, was to never give up, never settle and you know to change the world is a great thing to um, strive for but also to change ourselves um, every day, uh, progressing ourselves, making ourselves better. Um, so those were the things that we talked about. Also, um, in our current events, we talked about Kony 2012, and also Apollos talked about uh, the, the rise, the of, rise of the, the nuns. nuns, and that was from uh, a Time art Time article, right? right? From last week, the week that we filmed it. And um, there's been a lot of controversies surrounding Kony 2012. Right. Yeah. There, there was a lot of articles, a lot of um, Facebook pages about it. I didn't know this Kony Kony controversy would rise this much, and. Uh, yeah, and it, it started uh, the day after we started filming and by the time we uploaded the video, um, we both did a lot of research on what was going on, but uh, it takes a lot of energy to uh, refilm it, so we thought we might as well just upload it and then write a disclaimer notice somewhere on the video explaining um, what we know about the updated version or what's going on with Kony 2012. So um, I recently saw somewhere um, about that the phenomena behind Kony 2012 is actually starting to die down and that Jason Russell who is the man behind Kony 2012 is um, suffering a kind of oh yeah the, there was this um, disturbing video of him there was a video I just right. read an article did you see the video yeah I actually there I was like a 30 second video <laughs> okay. um, he was uh, I'm not sure to say this, but he was naked and just like running walking around, the, street, up, running around right. the block and stuff like that. People say he was under drugs, but I try to believe his wife is, she said, you know, he was dehydrated and malnourished. Malnourished, yeah, from. Uh, yeah, um, and I think I think the re reason behind it, well, you can't really be sure, but I think it was some kind of emotional or mental trauma um, regarding the backlash that he was receiving for, for like weeks um, from all over the world. You yeah, know? I mean, I understand. I, although. There was a lot of controversy and things to be criticized about the video itself. Mm -hmm. I don't think he had a bad intention to yeah. sort of spread it around. Yeah, right? and so um, what we did was after we filmed the video and then we saw the controversy going on, we uploaded on our new blog called tacunited.wordpress.com um, an issue, an article regarding the controversy and what as we as Christians uh, think about it. And like Apollo said, I mean, I sympathize Jason Russell. I don't think he was out there uh, trying to cause greater harm by supporting an organization that was supporting the Uganda government, such and such. We, we as Christians, um, can do either things. We can support invisible children, you know, still. Or um, there was actually a list of charities that, that gave um, more expenses. So they spent more expenses, more percentage on giving what they had to Uganda government instead of using it for video making. So they provided charity lists, a list of charities that were actually doing better jobs in helping Uganda. Okay. Um, so you can donate there. Or um, I think the safest and the most powerful way we as Christians can approach this matter is to pray about it. You know, yeah. pray for world peace, you know, pray for, you know, the kids that are dying, innocent kids that are dying and innocent people that are sacrificing their lives. So um, I think that's what Yeah, in a way that's the easiest and the most powerful way that we as Christians can help yeah. this matter, right? Yeah, so um, so those are the things that we talked about last week. Uh, today's video, we want to talk about the sphere of influence. And in another word, sphere of influence, we think, or I think, um, uh, means power. So we want to talk about powerful people and how powerful people can use their power or their sphere of influence in good or bad ways. And how as we as Christians um, should use our sphere of influence, basically. And Apollos, you talked about um, the social media, um, about the, how, how the world is changing. Yeah. Um, you want to just talk about, you know, some of the social trends that are going on? Well, I guess one of the biggest one is, I'm sure all of you heard about this, but, you know, Linsanity, I guess, um, I guess that's one of the biggest right, things. That's one of the, social media, yeah. right? Um, Jeremy Lin, I, um, I assume all of you guys know him, how, you know, he's like the hero to the Knicks and how he, sort of uh, reshaped how people view basketball as purely white and black men sport uh -huh. in a way. And um, he he was a cultural phenomenon and not only was he a, not only did he rise because of his you know sportsmanship, but also because he was breaking the cultural stereotypes of Asians, of Harvard grads, of 
Yeah, I think the impact that he gives is just as big as Eminem around like 2001 when he, or 1999 when he came out because mm-hmm. he was white and he was a rapper. Oh, oh right, there was a humor note that I yeah. read on <laughs> the internet. Um, sure. Should I say this? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, um, I mean, I assume all you guys know this, but um, uh, the society today, the black person is the president, the white person is the rapper, and the Asian guy is the basketball player. And he's not trying to be racist, he's just, yeah, yeah, all, he saw it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I saw it somewhere. Maybe and I think the point, of the, the, the point of the humor is that the world is really changing. Stereotypes are breaking, there are, you know, new stereotypes are forming. And um, for our discussion today, we want to talk about stereotypes. We want to talk about um, the sphere of influence and how certain people that fell into the stereotypes came out of it broke the stereotypes and recreated a new definition for right. their identity and the community's identity. And I think that's something that's really amazing and why I want to bring it up is because TAC um, tries to do just that. Um, because our mission is to reform the Christian image. And I think when I say image, we talk about a kind of stereotype that has been raised, rising. And also now with the reason why Jeremy Lin can be an inspiration to us is because he's Christian. Um, I heard he says, you know, during his most difficult times or periods when he was being um, ignored by people or rejected by people, he believed in God. You know, he said that his faith in God um, has brought him back up and that all that he receives right now is for God and that he will do anything to you know, glorify his name. And I think, um, I think that kind of statement that he says publicly, he says that publicly, um, is something that is very inspirational. Um, I saw, um, he, has an hand, he has a handshake that he does with his um, oh, players. Oh yeah, I heard about that. that is a, it's a Christian handshake, so he does like, I don't know what this it is. Bible opening. Yeah, he <laughs> opens the Bible, he like reads it. It's kind of, I thought it was actually pretty silly or funny the way it looked. Yeah, but. But, you know, it represents, it symbolizes his faith, and I think that's really great. So, um, instead of current events section where we have solid substance about, about what's rising and right. what's going on, we, we haven't found an outstanding source to talk about. But I think um, even though um, the thing, things that we refer to right now um, aren't things within the past week, they have been rising within the past, you know, yeah. decade or year. So I think uh, we can discuss about it. They're relevant. Yeah, they're relevant. Um, so... Going on, going on the stereotype issues. Do you know some of the, some people who have broke a stereotype and has risen above it and has inspired people within their community um, in a new direction? Um, Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres. Yes. Right. Um, I mean, who hates her? No, she's a talk show host, and everybody likes her the way she talks, her sense of humor, you know. Well, we don't know if nobody hates her, but we know that most she has people, this personality where right, she just attracts people, yeah, right? She, she's a very Okay, popular. let me just rephrase that. Um, I guess not everybody likes right, her. We can't but, speak for everyone, but... Yeah, but I presume that the majority of the people like her. Right. And, you know, um, as most of you guys will know, she's a lesbian, and um, she... In, I think, 1998, she came out of the closet publicly, and she said, Yes, I'm gay. And that was on the headlines, on the cover of Time Magazine, I believe, in 1998. And at that time, she was doing a sitcom. And uh, after, after that, um, you know, coming out of the closet publicly, she was ousted from her sitcom and she practically lost her career. But Ellen DeGeneres uh, came back. I don't know when it was, but she came back. And Yeah, her talk show was on uh, first aired in 2003, so... So, it's, so she came back around then and she's still doing very well. I think she, Ellen DeGeneres shows one of those people who use their talents such as humor, wittiness, um, wittiness is that a word? Wit, their wit or wit. their smartness <laughs> and their, you know, their talents in the business um, to send out a message. And I think, um, you know, she, she often talks about, you know, gay rights in her shows and you know many people listen to her because they love her and she sort of breaks the stereotype that you know if you're gay you're this way that way and you know she does that job for her own community and I think there are a lot of people you know I think celebrities in Hollywood do a lot of that um just one of the first people that I think of when I think of Hollywood celebrities who work for social causes is Angelina Jolie she is a constant you know She's constantly out there um, helping countries in need, helping societies in need, and um, 
people like Angelina and Jolie uh, use their, celebra their, their celebration. People celebrate them because they're so beautiful. They're wonderful actresses and actors um, for many reasons that they're celebrities. Um, they're celebrated. And they use that um, to send out even a positive message. And you talked about George Clooney and Brad Pitt, was it, or Matt Damon? Yeah, um, I mean, I'll just speak about George Clooney. Uh, okay. Recently he was arrested, but I with his father for um, refusing to get out of the protest for Sudanese people. Mm -hmm. um, George Clooney and his father were basically trying to expose and uh, make known to people about how situations, situations are so fragile in Sudan. Mm -hmm. And he does a lot of these uh, causes. And yeah. this arrest was, uh, I think, basically sort of a, a show to show people how mm -hmm. sort of um, he is willing to commit to these things for the cause of Sudanese people. Yeah, and I recently saw uh, Brad Pitt after um, Hurricane Katrina down in New Orleans, in that area down in the south. Um, of course, so many people lost lost their homes and whatnot. And uh, Brad Pitt went down there to New Orleans and he has built so far 75 houses for these families wow. who have lost their homes during Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina. And um, one of the great things about celebrities doing that is that um, yes, uh, Brad Pitt was very humble and he said that, oh, but I'm not the one that's actually building the homes, you know, there's so many smart people that are working with me um, and, you know, helping this uh, this place get back together. And so he gives credit to the people that actually are behind all this. But what's amazing is that he brings the media attention, you know, he brings interest, he brings, and he uses his fame for people to, you know, concentrate or focus on what's really going on and thereby help these communities. We want to go on saying that Hollywood celebrities do such things, but they're not the only ones who use their fame and celebration to get causes going. Um, I want to talk about another famous person. You know, we talk about famous people not just to celebrate famous people, but because they're so widely known and, you know, for. It's, it's someone that everybody can relate to. Yeah, and, yeah. So, you know, for so those of you who are famous. watching our videos, we don't want to talk about some people that you don't know and you're like, who? <laughs> I mean, we might. We will, um, time to time, talk about new rising stars or people that we want to introduce to you guys. And you could always search them up. Yeah. But, you know, for now, we just want to talk about some of the you know, big people that right. you guys might know right off the back of your head. Um, so, that person I want to talk about is Bill Gates. Um, Gates. Bill Gates has a foundation that he does with his wife called called the Gates Foundation. And, Bill and Melinda Gates. Foundation. Oh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And, I got um, that right. <laughs> he got that right. Uh, and uh, Bill Gates. Now there are celebrities. There are people out there that work for social causes. But one of the great things that I've been inspired by Bill Gates is not only his amazing talent and abilities and his philanthropy and you know countries. I know one of the biggest things uh, he works on is AIDS, AIDS issue. But also that he is very passionate about recreating, remaking the stereotype of capitalism. Um, even in America, you know, there's a lot of people who are against a kind of capitalism ideal idea. You know, we, we can see where that's coming from. I mean, yeah, you know, capitalism does reward uh, the rich people sometimes. Yes, they do. Yeah. And you know, there are you know, there you know, no system is actually perfect. But anyway, so we know where these criticisms are coming from, and Bill Gates himself um, knows why. And of course, there are people that are responsible for that ne negative image. But um, in a speech that he delivered, I think in 2009, and I don't know where, uh, he talks about creative capitalism. He talks about capitalism used uh, used for a good purpose. So meaning that he that there are stereotypes surrounding capitalism, negative stereotypes. When we talk about stereotypes. Um, it's a negative thing. It's not actually a good stereotype. Yeah, well, the there are some good ones, but yeah, but the general connotation. Yeah, the general connotation stereotype is, is not really is a good thing. Right? Yeah, it's negative. Um, he said that yes, capitalism can be put into bad use or in a negative way, and people can suffer through the system. However, if the right people um, used or utilize their businesses in a way that could create more opportunities for society, reshape the stereotype and um, create more opportunities and that the capitalist, capitalistic system actually can provide more opportunities than people actually know. Right. Um, so he encourages, him, he himself is a successful business person, so he is pushing that idea. So he's encouraging people to really succeed, um, really get their business going but not to hoard their possession or not to like, you know, be selfish about their possessions, but uh, thereby creating markets and more jobs and more opportunities for society. And um, 
I want to bring this up because you know we can reshape and recreate uh, stereotypes. I mean, I mean, we can use our celebration, our celebrity power, or our sphere of influence for social causes, like different social causes, like AIDS yeah. or some malaria, of those human I rights, malaria, malaria, some of those um, core issues. But also, people can use their power to recreate an idea. Right. And I think and stereotypes and right? stereotypes. So you know, many people can go out and support social causes, but when, uh, but that's one thing. But when someone actually tries to use their fame and celebration to recreate an idea in people's minds, it's actually a very difficult process, and it and it doesn't really happen. To, it doesn't that kind of influence isn't given to everyone. And for those who have that power, that sphere of influence, when they use it to create a more positive. Um, impact in the world I think yeah. that's really great and um, I think we as Christians you know uh, Apollos you you explained uh, TAC you gave us an overview of what TAC was about our mission um, last video right in our last video yeah. and our actually first one and uh, basically TAC is about you can give us another overview oh, um, okay. our mission about maybe how stereotypes um, or this kind of trying to reform an image uh, pertains or inspires TAC, how that I mean, relates. We have a very specific mission, you know, we want to recreate the image of Christians and how people perceive Christians. And like I said in the last video, um, we were kind of upset about how people began to have this negative outlook on Christians. Mm -hmm. And we just, we wanted to sort of tell the people, we're not reshaping it because this is not true anyways. Right. We are restoring mm -hmm. it. That's the difference, I uh -huh. think. We are reforming the Christian image as it was before when people found Christians to be a good people, you know, with good values, you know, credible. And that's what we strive to do. And um, one of the ways we strive to do this is by creating a global network of achievers, mm -hmm. um, uh, training future Christian achievers. Yes. So basically creating this network of achievers all around the world to support our causes, who share our vision and our mission mm -hmm. and our philosophy. And also, um, creating change all around the world is also what we do, but um, individual change. So we encourage people to dream big, um, to not let, you know, for example, financial circumstances, environmental obstacles, some of the, those things that I know are very powerful and hindering um, in dreaming big. But still, even if there are things like that, to dream above those, because not because we trust ourselves and the skills that we have, but because we trust in God and that God will provide a way um, so we encourage just TAC members and you know whoever's watching this video or whoever comes across TAC to dream big, to have God's vision in our hearts and to really uh, increase that sphere of influence, um, hopefully globally. And um, as Apollo said, this degradation of Christian image, we're not going to say that everyone thinks this way. I know a bunch of people that respect um, Christians, that respect our faith, our religion, you know, not everyone, you know, cuts it down but I think um, there are times when out in the social media there's like scandals that occur yeah and 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 that's really disappointing um, <clears throat> and those are really big things but even minutely like in cases where oh you know Christians are soft players or that they they don't really work hard or things like that or they trust God because um, they can actually do well themselves you know I think it's harder to evangelize or to really say oh I'm a Christian um, I think it's going to get harder and harder as the yeah. world progresses and as there's more people who are against Christians, maybe. So it's really hard to say you're Christian. Um, for some, especially for teenagers who are in that peer pressured mode, where oh, if yeah. they have to say that they're Christian or that they're really devoted to their faith or that they don't do certain things because they're Christian and they're ousted or they're not accepted or they're made fun of for those reasons. or you know, even going out on the streets and evangelizing, these things have become... I mean, yeah, believe it or not, I'm a high school student, so I should know, right? I mean, if I... I mean, occasionally I evangelize in the streets with my church mm -hmm. members, and I, I come across, you know, my classmate or my friend, and, you know, sometimes, you know, very, very little, I kind <laughs> of feel, you know, you know... Um, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes. Yeah, kind of, but you know, I, of course I don't feel this every time, because if I am, I'm not. But yeah. I try to overcome that with prayer. I try to overcome that with the fact that what I'm doing is right. And I, I'm doing this for, for the right reason, for the truth. So mm -hmm. I guess that just like drives me on sometimes. But sometimes, very little bit, when I come across my classmate or my friend during evangel ev evangelization, I kind of feel embarrassed. And um, I think that's what many teens feel 
with yeah. the Christians, right? Yeah, and for people, for example, you know, as we talked about Ellen DeGeneres, you know, nowadays um, kids are not embarrassed about their sexuality because they have stars, they have celebrities, they have people that they look up to, role right. models, who provided a path for them, right? For yeah. their, their identity, being proud of their identity. And my question is, what are Christians doing? You know, what are Christians, are Christians being just as passionate or just as motivated to create that accepting or that beautiful community where the next generation and the generation after that can have role models to look up to? And um, TAC meetings um, and TAC members, what we do is we want to create that community. We want right. to, re re you know, we, I think for us to say that we want to recreate the Christian image um, sounds it's very conceited of very us. Very audacious. Um, to say that oh we have you know we have the power to do that we don't have the power to yeah, do of that. Course, we're just but students, I, right? but we are striving. We are striving to create um, for ourselves and for our next generation and for our fellow Christians around the world that um, a new uh, role models uh, that we can look up to. And in our next video, tell them what we're going to do in our next video. Well, in our next video, we are going to... Should I say this? It's, the collage. Uh, it's a little bit of a spoiler, but yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to we're gonna come up with this collage, you know, featuring all these famous um, Christian uh, celebrities and famous people who people can look up to. Yeah, when we say celebrities, we don't necessarily mean Hollywood yeah, stars. Yeah, I mean... Just it, people who have... It could be sports uh, sportsmen. It could be like... Politics. Po politicians, yeah. So just people who have made it in the public sphere. And that... And people who... People can... Who people generally know, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to be uh, Hollywood or like a singer or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna show you a collage of all these various Christian celebrities and uh, role models who set who set an example for how Christians could, should properly behave. And by showing this, I hope you guys can sort of feel that community. Yeah. Uh, sort of. Uh, you know, even for me, when I come across uh, some great, inspiring person who is also Christian and. Um, he or she openly or publicly, you know, says, uh, talks about his or her faith. It's really inspiring for inspiring for me. It's like, oh, it gives, it sends me a message that, you know, as a Christian, oh, I should do better. Or, wow, God's really going to provide a way. Look at how that person has made it in the world um, and hasn't ha hasn't had hasn't had to succumb to some of the, uh, some of the demands of the secular society. And so um, we encourage role model, I mean those people, and we want to introduce them to you. And also we want to ask whoever's watching and even ourselves um, to strive to become that kind of person and to right. create um, that kind of positive impact into the world. And yeah. um, in our Christian faith, in our faith, you know, we learned that, you know, God is a good God and that he's great. But, you know, sometimes, this is really hard, but it happens to people who are in positions um, when we see like Jeremy Lin, you know, he had he had a position or he had an expectation and then he was sort of did not achieve it and then people were disappointed and those things happen all around. When people in power who represent a certain community right. fail an expectation, people suddenly not only criticize the person, but then they also criticize the community right. behind that it's person. It's kind of sad. Man. It's kind of sad. Yeah. yeah, so even if it's, in a way it is a burden, but right. I think it's a very good burden for Christians because yeah. we are the... Because we are like the face, we are representing our community, and in a way, that's a very good thing. Yeah, it's like being a messenger, you know, yeah. I think that has nothing to do with power. I think everybody, um, everybody who believes in God um, are like ambassadors for God, you know, ambassadors of the good news. And um, I think it's a burden, but if you want to take it in a positive way, it's just being responsible. Responsible for... Um, your faith and being a responsible Christian and I think that's something that TAC has always encouraged and we encourage you know all of you guys um, if there are non-Christians who are watching this um, even if you aren't Christian um, just if you have a positive message that you want to send out to the world um, being responsible for that message and acting accordingly is something that's being responsible um, even as citizens or as community members um, that's something that we should um, always strive to keep up right we want to share with you uh, two quotes that um, can really relate to the discussion that we are talking about. And um, it's in our book called Sid. Uh, we introduced this <laughs> last week. Yeah, last video too. But, you know, it's a very good book. We worked hard on this. So here, it's uh, Sid. Um, in case um, those of you who don't know what it stands for, it's an acronym for Sources for Intellectual Discourse. Yeah, and it's just really like there's a chapter of just quotes and there's chapters of 
essays right. and poetry. So just the, just uh, the sources that we have studied and we have really discussed in our meetings that we hold every week. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, all right, so here it goes. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Now, I think that's a very powerful quote. It is a powerful quote. And uh, you want to share what you think yeah, about it? Yeah, I think it means um, instead of all the criticisms that we receive our, in, uh, from our enemies, in the end, we will you know, remember more from those people who support us but don't really do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, so I think, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, he was a civil rights, he was part of the civil rights movement. Um, and he did, you know, he really spoke out so that he can, you know, help not only himself, but everyone in his, in his community. And um, I think what really gives us pain is that the people that are supposed to be supporting us, people who are supposed to be there in the front row, front line, you know, supporting and, you know, helping when they're not there for you or yeah. they're staying silent because they don't want to look crazy or they don't want to be part of that chaotic mess and they stay silent. That hurts more than the actual criticism. Yeah, those people who look the other way, right? Yeah, they look the other way. And, you know, when you, when you, I think that's what it means to be a part of a community. When you're in a community, yeah. you expect that even though as an individual you're not powerful enough to create change but what's required i think what's required of you is a com is a sort of commitment to the community mm -hmm. right right so one person can't make that change sometimes but when a group of people you know collaborate together right. um there's nothing as powerful as that and so martin luther king jr he he lived through a very critical time in history yeah. and he's made amazing change and he's one of those people that did not sit in the back or turn the other way um he really was out there in the front line fighting for their civil rights and so um and I also, um, you know, during the civil rights movement, I'm sure you guys would know, there were also white people supporting the movement. Right. And yes, if it wasn't for these white people supporting the movement as well as the black people, I think this movement would not have succeeded in the end. Right. So, yeah, he thinks so. Um, so, um, I think the point is that, you know, I think what he meant is that regardless of color, you know, regardless of any of that barrier that there might be, um, if you support something, if you know that you're part of that movement, that part of that community, Fighting for it, um, speaking out for it, is something that's crucial and a responsibility that members of the community should have. And for Christians, that's very important. We talked about Bill Gates, so we want to share a very short uh, quote that Bill Gates says. Oh he yeah, he said it before, but yeah, he but says, I'll, I'll read it again, okay? Uh, remake the stereotype of capitalism. Right, and I think uh, literally that's just one part of that whole speech, but he says remake the stereotype in of just, capitalism. In just, in just five sentences, uh, five words, he mm -hmm. just um, sort of tells us the message right. that we've been saying for like five minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, for us, it's important that we you know, use whatever sources we have, one example is YouTube, mm -hmm. um, to send out this positive image of Christians and give that uh, support for other Christians all around the world. Yeah. Um, and be role and we're young now, but you know we strive to become role models for the next generation. Right, and that's why we are you know making this video, mm -hmm. and we are having meetings every week. Right, and so just as we are inspired by Christians, uh, Christian achievers, true Christian achievers who use their talents and abilities for the glory of God, um, we hope that whoever's watching this can also be inspired in the same light that we have been inspired. And um, until our next video. Um, we hope that you guys keep this in mind and even if it's two or three people, some of your friends, uh, create that change, create that positive impact um, wherever you go. So I hope your sphere of influence is used for the glory of God. So thank you for watching our video and I guess we're just going to pretty much end it up here. Mm -hmm. um, just to give you a little spoiler for the next video, we're going to, like I said, show you a collage of, the, of various um, Christian celebrities that rose to the top in the past two years. And we're just going to, you know, give you a little more engaging, you know, uh, yeah, going, overview of these um, celebrities. Yeah, we're going to provide a collage with like pictures of each of those uh, Christian figures, right. and you know, point to them, you know, bring out the articles and talk about each one. And their one. significance to yeah, the community and, and stuff like they that. They might really inspire you guys that are watching. Yeah, and I, I think it's gonna be more fun than just talking, right? You know, showing you the image hopefully, and everything. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna end here. Please subscribe. Um, we have various. Um, uh, SNS. <laughs> SNS, right, social uh -huh. networking, something like that. Services, yeah. Right, uh, we have WordPress, we have Twitter, and we have Facebook. Um, all the addresses to these three sites are on the description box. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, if you just look, we, uh, please like or follow um, our Twitter or Facebook. Please like our videos, um, share it with your friends. Uh, don't keep the good things to yourself. If you like it, you should share it. Yeah, so. that's uh, being part of a community. Right, right. so <laughs> share, um, like it. Yeah, and I guess. And follow us. Follow us, yeah. yeah. Alright, so um, until our next video, think about what we talked about, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.